No, nope. well, let me I'm make sure I'm out of everything. Can... How could you even get into things? <laughs> I don't oh, even know there's how lots of things. Get into <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, we're good. Good. Hey, what's happening, you guys? Welcome to the Proclivity Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cochran. I'm here with Emily Rodella. And today, what we're going to be talking to you about is the carnivore diet. Why are we talking to you about the corn carnivore diet? Did I call it corna bar? That's <laughs> yeah. a new diet, you guys. Check it out. It's going to be the rage in 2025. It's all corn. Cornivore. <laughs> it's all corn. Okay. It's going to be crazy good. Why are we talking about the carnivore diet? It's because currently right now, Emily and I are going through the carnivore diet. And so what we're going to talk to you today is about one, our experience, how's it going with us, but we're also going to talk to you about what is the carnivore diet? What can you eat? What are you not supposed to eat? Is there levels to this? What are the benefits to it? What are the drawbacks to it? So we're going to give you the lowdown. This is the daily drive. So we're going to hit it to you short fast, and an informational overload. Do we want to overload people or do we just want to give them just enough? Just enough. All right. We're going to give you just enough when it comes to the carnivore diet. We're excited. So let's dive in. Emily, let's start right off as we usually do. What is the carnivore diet? The carnivore diet is eating only animal products, simply put right? Specifically meat, fish, eggs. Um, and then if you tolerate dairy, dairy can be included as well, especially high quality dairy. And again, that's for you to choose to do or not to do. All right. So I thought the carnivore diet was you're only eating beef. That is, Yet there's levels to this. Yeah, exactly. So there's levels. So that is the strict version. So anyone who has say a serious autoimmune condition or serious symptoms, health symptoms in general, where they're really struggling. They've tried quote unquote, literally probably everything at this point to help with their symptoms. It's not working. That's where you want to go the full strict, full, just red meat or, um, ruminant animal meat, nose to tail, eating the whole animal. That would be the strict highest level. Oof. And, and you're not supposed to have like a ton of spices or anything with it, right? No spices, just salt. Salt and beef. Yep. Hey, what are you going to have today? Mm, I'm going <laughs> to have me some beef with a side of salt. <laughs> what about for lunch? Mm, I'm going to have some salt with a side of beef. <laughs> there are times where we chew on salt. <laughs> oh my goodness if gracious. You're, if you're getting, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the... The, the highest level is going to be really about help with autoimmune disease, um, gut reset, microbiome, that cancers, kind of stuff. Met, like serious metabolic health issues. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Why do most people do the carnivore? Hmm. It, it definitely takes a certain personality to do it. And so it is interesting to see who chooses to do it and not because it, it can feel quote unquote unrealistic to do. Yet I would say the majority of people, it's either you're trying to lose weight or you have a serious autoimmune issue. Got you. And that's what I would say. The majority of the people that I know that have done the carnivore, less were about like, oh man, I have this big rash or autoimmune disease coming up. They're, they're not that in depth or have done that much study to it. They look at it and they go, oh, I've, I've heard people lose weight. Why would people lose weight on the carnivore diet? Uh, well, it's restrictive for one, right? So we're, <laughs> we're really minimizing the options of what to eat. We're completely taking out carbohydrates unless you do some dairy. Um, but even then it's very low and any kind of infection disease pathogen typically thrives and grows and does better when there's carbohydrates because it's sugar. That's what they feed off of. And that is what gotcha. a big um, reason why people do it. It really decreases inflammation and can eliminate anything that's going on in the body that we don't want to be going on. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, all right, I'm following along here. Um, I was, I'll, t I'll be honest. Uh, we went shopping at Costco and I wasn't sure 
what we were going to be eating. And I was pleasantly surprised when you said that we got to eat eggs. Mm -hmm. That has been a nice touch. Because I was thinking, I, I was starting to get the sweats thinking about the meat sweats <laughs> of like, man, I'm just going to eat meat, like sit down, meat. Yep. Adding in those eggs is a game changer. It really is. It really is. And the reason why someone would not do eggs again, there it is on the list of like the top 10 most uh, sensitive allergy, you know, foods that you could be sensitive to or have an allergy to and not know it or realize gotcha. it. So that's the reason mm -hmm. why you would do it without um, yep. But it does make it so much more doable. So that's why for most people, if you don't think you have an allergy or sensitivity to eggs, I would include that. Okay. And we're going to get to you what we have done, you guys, that has helped us through the carnivore diet. Yet there's a few things that I want to continue to dive into. Let's go into the benefits of the carnivore diet. We kind of talked about the, the autoimmune stuff and the, the, the weight loss. Um, what are some of the big benefits? Like, why are you doing it? Why mm -hmm. am I doing it? What, why would people, uh, start the carnivore diet? Yeah, it's such a great healing diet because it's really centered in protein and fat, which are the main macronutrients that you really need, uh, for all the main purposes in your body. Cause your body can turn those into sugar if need be for brain stuff, you know, all sorts of things when it comes to glucose. Right. So our body's resourceful there. Um, <clears throat> and one, it makes things simple for people who are like, I don't know what to do, but you're getting your protein in, which is the most important thing when you want to change your body composition. Yeah. And so it makes it very easy and you, you're satiated. There's no hyper palatability to it. So we're not overeating when we don't need to be eat, overeating, right? So that's like the mm -hmm. main part is we're getting enough protein, whereas most people who aren't doing this, it's just a struggle to get enough protein in. But when this is your only option, you're like, okay, I'll just have more meat. Like I had a snack the other night. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like more hungry after dinner. I'm like, I'll have a chomp st beef stick. <laughs> that was my dessert <laughs> and yeah. just more protein. And so when we get more protein, we're more satiated and it helps with a lot of function that's in our body. And beef is so nutrient dense that it really helps heal things just because of the nutrient profile as well. I, well, and touch on that. There's going to be a lot of people that I mean, what do you mean it's nutrient dense? Uh, how is beef nutrient dense? Isn't plants and fruits, they're the super fruit and the, the tell me this, tell me mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So beef or meat in general, quality meat is going to have the most bioavailable protein. So AKA amino acids, you're going to have the highest level of amino acids that you need for protein muscle synthesis, which is the process in your body that helps with things like muscle repair, muscle growth, muscle maintenance. And we need that. And so it, one, you're going to, it's going to be the most bioavailable form of proteins and amino acids Two, beef has such an array of vitamins and minerals that not like it again, that are more bioavailable than plant foods. Hmm. And then also saturated fat, especially when it's coming up from a quality source, you need saturated fat for so many things. You need good cholesterol for so many things in our body. And right. so it just has everything in there. Um, and specifically to meat, there's, um, an amino acid that helps produce serotonin. So a lot of people who are doing vegan, uh, diets, they're missing out on that. And it's really hard to get that in unless you really supplement correctly. Um, and so it can help with the things like depression even. And so it's just an all around superfood. Are you saying that eating meat can make you happy? Correct. That's true. I know. I know it makes me happy. I know it makes me happy. Tell me a little, just, just to make sure that everybody understands what's bioavailable. What uh, your body, mean? yeah, your body can absorb it and use it, right? So a lot of times when we're eating plant proteins, for example, there may be say 20 grams in a scoop of pr plant protein powder and you're probably not absorbing, uh, I would say you're absorbing less than 70% of it most of the time for a plant protein. So with beef gotcha. or animal proteins, you're absorbing like 90 to hundred percent of it. So you're getting all the nutrients. Yep. And so again, you're, you're getting the most bang for your buck when you're eating. You're not overeating calories just because when, when we're hungry and craving things, it's our body usually saying, hey, I need more because I don't have the nutrients, right? And so mm -hmm. when a lot of the times on plant-based uh, meals or uh, diets, we tend to overeat because you're having to eat a lot more to get the nutrients to absorb them all. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, it does. It does. I just wanted to make sure that, mm -hmm. that people understood the, the bioavail available. That's a term that's kind of tossed around guys and making sure that, uh, you know, the difference because we could eat the foods, but the food that doesn't right. mean that 
the food is going to be uptaked, right? right. We're not going to get all the the macros and micronutrients out of it. Right, exactly. Okay. All right, so those are the upsides, some really good upsides to the carnivore diet. What about the downsides? What are the downsides to the carnivore diet? Yeah, the biggest downside uh, would be the lack of variety. And for a lot of people, it's tough to stick to long-term. Um, even just after a day, it's like, woof, it's just a lot of the same stuff and can be tough for people um, to maintain. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're getting zero carbs. So initially, if you're not metabolically flexible, it can be a tough transition if your body's reliant on carbohydrates. So you might feel low blood sugar like symptoms or even experience low blood sugar. Um, you may have a little bit more stress with that, feeling lightheaded, um, feeling really lethargic at first. But again, mm -hmm. this is why we coach people to say, hey, let's ease into this. It's just like fasting. We want to ease into it depending on who you are, what your body is like right now, and how can we work your way into it where it makes sense and feels a lot better. Mm -hmm. Those would be the main downsides to it. Sure, sure. Well, and I would almost flip that too in terms of, I mean, we talked about the benefits and also the drawbacks. One of the benefits for me is that it makes it really easy. Yeah. I'm going to eat meat. So it's not confusing of like, what am I going to make tonight? Mm -hmm. And so it, it is quite simple of like, right. cook this big piece of meat, eat this meat. So right. there's that simplicity. And then on the, on the backside, yes, you know, mixing it up and getting different types of meats in there uh, can get repetitive. Mm -hmm. Yet, it is a great test to be able to find out your metabolic flexibility. So if you think like, oh, no, I'm metabolically flexible. And if people don't know what metabolic flexibility, Emily, what's metabolic flexibility? It's ability for our bodies to transition from using carbs to fat for fuel seamlessly and vice versa. And so if you can do that, you're going to have less crashes, more steady energy, right. better sleep, a better hormone balance, so many different things. And so this is a, actually a good test that's I, is a step above fasting because fasting is also a way to be able to test that metabolic flexibility. You're at least eating. Yet I would assume that with the eating, it would maybe take uh, two days or three days to find out if you're metabolically flexible. Or would you find that out in the first day? Oh, yeah. Most people the first day. For us, really? it might we might notice some effects if we're not hydrating properly. We might notice it. And if we're working out super hard, we might see it in the next like th th two, three, four days. But for most people, you'll notice it um, by lunchtime or dinner. Wow. Okay. Okay, cool. What about uh, people's concerns in terms of fat, cholesterol, sodium? We're talking about putting salt on top of fat. Like <laughs> yeah. we'll eat literally bacon for dinner. So what about people's concerns there? Yeah. So anytime that you're doing low carb, you're fasting like keto, any of those that are low carb in essence, and this is a zero carb for the most part, um, your body excretes a lot more salt. So we need way more salt than the average, uh, especially than the standard American lifestyle diet. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's not an issue. And, and if you go back to our salt sodium podcast, we explain it way more in depth there, but I'm not worried about that because we're eating no carbs. And so our body's just, it's going right through us. We need a lot more uh, sodium in general. Um, mm -hmm. It's giving us minerals. That's what helps with the lethargy or what some people call the keto flu. It could be deemed to the carnivore or the fasting flu too, whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> so you need the extra salt. When it comes to cholesterol, um, yeah, that's a tricky one. It's another one that's been debunked quite a bit in terms of high cholesterol. Blood serum cholesterol does not come from high cholesterol foods is, is a difference. We need cholesterol for our cells to function, for our hormones to function well. And so usually the high cholesterol comes from, for some, there's a fraction of people where there, there are studies showing that dairy products can increase it for people. So there are some people I would say, hey, lay off the half and half and the butter and the milk and the yogurt, whatever. Maybe usually it's the, the thicker ones. Um, like the butter and the, the half and half. Um, but for most other people, it's more stuff like stress, alcohol, and sugar mm -hmm. that are the main ones that are causing the cholesterol issues. And then for some people who have thyroid issues, which again, thyroid is more coming from autoimmune issues typically, and we need to address that first too. And so it's usually not the, the high cholesterol food that's causing high cholesterol on our lab results. Hmm. 
Okay. And some people be like, okay. what? My doctor so, told me differently. <laughs> sure, sure. It, it, and uh, we do know, guys, uh, your doctor spent two weeks out of the eight years on nutrition, just as a heads up. So it is not to not to put down any doctors, Western, Eastern, doesn't matter. In the Western medical um, uh, school, it's two weeks. It's two weeks of nutrition talk. So uh, we just got to be careful where we're taking our inputs from. Um, what about fiber? Mm. I mean, fiber is in vegetables, yeah. fruit. What's going to happen if you don't have any fiber? <laughs> Yeah. So this is where it can get tricky for some people, right? If you have a really good gut, if you have great health, there's really no reason for you to do this unless you are trying to lose weight. Um, and that's just something you want to do. But we got to be careful because when you have no fiber, it's also not going to be the fiber feeds good and bad gut bacteria. We actually want the good bacteria, right? We want to get rid of the bad bacteria. And so you want to be careful of it, just have that in mind. And when you come out of carnivore, if you start incorporating things in, we want to pay attention to what are the fibers that we're eating to come out of this and feed the good bacteria. And sometimes that can be tricky if you don't have lab, like a stool test done, or if you don't know exactly the bacteria is. Um, but in general, we don't want to just come back from carnivore eating refined foods. We want to think good, a good variety of fruits and vegetables um, and start there. But you will probably notice a lack of stools or just uh, less in the day or even skipping a day at first until your body regulates. Um, and again, that depends the person if it's a good or bad thing, but most oftentimes it's okay for a period of time. Um, so long as you're not feeling constipated or you're not ha having any downside effects from it. And you taught me something this past week, but mm -hmm. I didn't know floaters and sinkers. <laughs> yeah. What's the difference? Well, when your stool is floating in the toilet, that usually means there's uh, undigested fat in there. So most times that's going to be a poor functioning gallbladder. And so you really want to support that gallbladder with things like MCT oil, with supplements that help your gallbladder become unclogged and detoxified, um, which that's that's where we have to talk one-on-one -on -one of like, hey, do you have any other symptoms going on? What else can we do? But there's some supplements that can help with that. And if it sinks? If it sinks, that's, that's better. <laughs> That's what you want. Okay, there you go. <laughs> if you guys got to this point of the podcast, that was a mind blower for me. I was like, huh? That, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, from stools to the foods. Perfect transition. <laughs> Tell us the foods that we can eat. So give us uh, specifics when it comes to the carnivore diet. Yeah. If, if, if we weren't at the, the, the highest level. Right, right. So any kind of meat, right? We want to stay the majority of it being a uh, ruminant animal. So beef, you know, or deer or elk, or if you have any of those kinds of things, um, you can include turkey and chicken if you want. It's just those eat grain, which have the seed oils, which have some things in there that's just not as healthy and it can cause inflammation in our body. So just got to be aware of that. But in general, for variety's sake, like I'm eating some chicken sausages, um, I, you know, I might throw in... Basically, that's probably actually the only thing I'm going to have when it comes to turkey and chicken. But otherwise, um, pork right would be another option. So I'm doing bacon just because bacon is so delicious and it makes things mm -hmm. so much better. And then um, eggs, right? So eggs is super helpful. We're doing, I would probably have eggs at least once a day, if not with both meals. I'm doing two meals right now. I might add a third in. We'll see how the week goes. Um and then we do chompsticks because that's just all beef. And so there are some herbs in these sausages and in the chompsticks. I'm okay with that because it's so minimal and I'm not, um, I'm not having these giant flare-ups or giant autoimmune issues right now. I have some skin issues that I'm hoping this will help with, um, but it's not, it's not a huge thing. So, and I've done this before with these same foods and it did help with some issues. So we're, again, we're testing it out, but in general, meat, eggs, if you think you do well with dairy, you can do some raw unpasteurized milk, um, some quality grass-fed yogurt, some grass-fed butter. Um, you can mm -hmm. experiment with those things, but a lot of people have sensitivities to dairy. So if you're doing it to figure out some health issue, I would keep dairy out at least to start. What about fish? Oh, I forgot that one. Yes, you can have fish. 
Um, we want to do wild fish. caught okay. fish. Yeah, we want to do wild caught fish. A lot of people get worried about mercury in fish, so we want to make sure it's a good quality. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then go for it. Okay. All right. There you go. There's the list for you guys. Now, let's just real quick, just so we're covering our bases, what are the foods that you do avoid? Yeah, all plant foods, including uh, fruits, veggies, seeds, nuts, legumes, grains. I think that covers everything. And then you get into processed food, which of course is not part of it. What about drinks? Mm, water. <laughs> water, bubbly. What we, we are doing uh, Pellegrino because there's some minerals in there. Um, I but am. No alcohol, oh, no God. sodas. Nope. This is, nope. think, very plain. Nope. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. We are adding okay. element. Cool. And um, some people, like, we had coffee today. I'm not going to have that every day because I think that might be a, an issue for me. Um, so that's something to consider. Is like you may, yeah, consider removing coffee at least for a few days, for a few weeks, see how that goes for you. It's just it's similar to dairy. So it is a plant gotcha. food technically. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we have an outline. We know what to eat, what not to eat. Run us through it. What did you eat yesterday? Give us your meals all the way through. Yeah. So for my first meal, I had a chicken sausage with four eggs and four mini Teton grass fed sausages and a piece of bacon. And I might have added a chomstick to that after that. I can't remember. That was okay. meal one. And then I uh, went home <laughs> and uh, I had, oh, I had tri tip, probably four big slices of tri tip with another four eggs and maybe another chomps beef stick after that. And pork rinds <sighs> as an appetizer. Yes. The little crunch right there. Oh, yeah. That's a winner. That's yes. a winner. That's a winner. Okay. I love it. I love it. I have found it to be very interesting for myself um, going through it. I had a lot of resistance the other day. That's because I did a three-day fast. I already had some limitations, and now I'm rolling into more limitations. Um, and I'm finding myself settling in a little bit. I'm very curious. Uh, the plan is to do it for seven days. Uh, how long would you tell people to do this for? Yeah, if you're brand new and you are having some resistance of like, oh, can I do this? Set your expectations lower. That's why we're like, hey, seven days, we'll see what happens on day seven. Maybe we'll keep going. Maybe we'll have more meat. We're feeling good. We'll see. But if you have an autoimmune issue, if you have serious gut issues, this is why a lot of people do it if you have leaky gut, then I would recommend at least 30 days to fully like heal it. And some people even recommend wow. four months up to six months. So wow. anywhere from three, uh, one month to six months would be the range for healing serious health issues. Um, if you're trying gotcha. to lose weight, however long you want to for that. Okay. All right. So real quick to wrap this whole thing up, guys, we've, we, we talked about the carnivore diet. What is it? We've talked about the benefits, the drawbacks of it, the foods to eat, the foods not to eat, an example of what to eat throughout the day. Give us the three steps of getting started with the carnivore diet. Three steps. Um, get a grocery list out. <laughs> Put down all the different meats that you would enjoy eating. Think of the ones that you're like, ooh, I look forward to that. Ooh, like for me, it's bacon and chopsticks and pork rinds. Those are my like treats. And I make sure I have those on hand every day to have at least one of those. Cool. Um, and pick a time to where it, you know, I was going to go to dinner tonight. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm thinking, hmm, what am I going to order? Okay, I'll get salmon, maybe some tri tip. Right. So thinking through the time period that you're doing, especially in the beginning of like, hey, am I going to be at home and have my meal prepared? Am I going to be going at a party? What am I going to do there? So planning ahead for any situation in your week um, and then making sure you have enough electrolytes and quality water. That really matters. It's going to make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Very similar to uh, being on a, a longer fast, yep. having those electrolytes and that water has been huge for me. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to continue on this meat diet, you guys, also known as carnivore. Um, we do it for a certain amount of time. This is trial. The baseline of what we do is the proclivity method. And if that's something that you are curious about, please reach out. We have essential habits that 90% of people are not following day to day. They're going to help you create more energy, decrease stress, be able to help you sleep better at night, essential stuff. If you're curious, head to proclivity.co. You'll book a call with Emily. She'll walk you through to be able to see, wait, do you guys fit? Do you not fit? And then if so, 
you, you're going to come and talk to me. If you get to me, well, buckle up. It's going to be fun. <laughs> That's great. Emily, anything else? Yeah, I just thought of this supplements, I'm sure would be a question. Do you take supplements? And I do. Um, but there is, it is a good idea to take a break from supplements here and there, but I know me, I need like, for example, magnesium, I need that on a daily or else I feel it very quickly. So that I'm continuing to Great. take And there's certain herbs. I think I have some kind of a yeast overgrowth in my gut. So I am taking some herbs to help with that. Um, but for, for everyone else, like if there's certain ones that you feel like you need cool, take them. Otherwise take a break. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Cool. There it is guys. Well, Episode 134, Daily Drive, Carnivore Diets in the books. We love that you come here and you listen to us. It really means the world to us. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, leave a review, let us know. And until we see you next week. Best day ever. You best believe it. Emily, best meat if you had to eat it every day. Try tip. Try tip. Done. Me too. All right. End of game. See you later. <laughs>